Toronto signs Kevin Kiermeyer. What does that mean to the Cubs? Well, looks like Scott Boris has lost one more destination for Cody Bellinger. Maybe that helps make this reunion a little bit easier. I know Cubs fans would like that. We're going to talk about what's going on right now with Cody Bellinger as uh, another team that you would expect maybe a destination for him has fallen off the list. Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel, everybody. Like and subscribe. Let's get this thing started. Go Cubs! What do you say, everybody? I'm Mick Gillespie. Welcome to the Cubs baseball channels on the socials at Broadcaster Mick. All right, so today's news. Uh, I guess it's surprising. I mean, we kept waiting on Toronto. Are they going to sign Cody Bellinger? I mean, we kept hearing smoke out there. We talked about the uh, poutine, uh, not to be mistaken for another word. Uh, and obviously, if you guys saw that show, I was joking. That was uh, Rocky Dale Davis, one of my favorite comedians and friends, does a whole bit on poutine and being out in Canada. So I was kidding. I guess you guys don't know him. Anyway, Toronto's a great city. Baseball's third, though. Hockey, basketball, and then baseball. Uh, but the attendance is great. People like baseball out there. And uh, they signed uh, today, according to uh, sources, Kevin Kiermeyer, guy I saw come up in the – uh, the uh, Tampa Bay system, four-time gold glover. Four times the guys won a gold glove. And uh, a one-year contract worth $10 million, that's a lot less than the $200 million that Scott Boris is demanding for Cody Bellinger. Yeah, a lot less. And, and that also puts them in a spot where they don't really need Bellinger. Now they've got their outfield covered. They also have a first baseman. They don't need... Cody Bellinger. I mean, could he come and play, you know, hit for him and be their DH? I mean, I don't even know. Yeah, I guess he could. But I think this was a move that for them says, you know what? We're not getting into this anymore. We're not we're not giving the guy two hundred million dollars. We're not we're not going to get into this arms race uh, for Bellinger. Kiermaier, four gold gloves. Won one last year in Toronto. They know what he brings to the table. You know, and, and it's just, you know, offensively, he's not the same type of player as Cody Bellinger. Both are actually really good defenders. Kiermaier's the best defensive center fielder, though, in the American League, right? But here's his slash, you know, eight home runs, 36 knocked in. Far, far short of Cody Bellinger, who missed a month of the season last year and still had 26 home runs and 97 runs batted in. And as Cubs fans, we know, it's not just – you know, padding stats. I mean, the guy, how many games was it last year that he came up with the hit? Either the game-tying hit or the go-ahead run or in a really important game, hit a home run to put the Cubs on the board. These weren't just like trash runs. These were these were high-leverage RBIs, right? So I think all of us would love to see him come back. Um, but John Heyman says that, as we've talked about on here, Agnosium, that he wants a, a multi-year deal worth $200 million. And teams are saying, ah, eh, you know, we're, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not into that. You know, so here's a here's another team off the list. So at the beginning of the offseason, we said, well, the Yankees, right? He's going to the Yankees. And then the Yankees were like, ah, we don't really like your exit velo. Now, what'd you do the last, you know, two years before comeback player of the year? discounted them a little bit. So they went out and traded five prospects, some of the best they had, some pitching to the Padres, and they got Juan Soto. And now they have a chance to see what Juan Soto does, and then they'll be dealing with, you know, with Boris to sign him at the uh, end of the year. Yeah, or next year, right? But he's going to get maybe $300 million or whatever. If but, but you know what the Yankees get? They get a chance to see if he can play in New York, which not every person can do. Um. Then it was the Giants, right? And and people were saying maybe the Giants are still in the mix right now. Could the Giants still be there? Well, then they went out and signed Young Hu Lee 
from Korea, and uh, he's a young guy that plays center field, and they're they're giving him, you know, one hundred and thirteen million dollars. So does that mean you couldn't put Bellinger at first or DH or whatever? Well, no, it doesn't. But but obviously, when you go out and you you spend that kind of money on a center fielder, and 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 your outfield is you know pretty much solidified you would kind of take him out of the mix. Although the Giants feel like they're watching players don't that don't want to come be in San Francisco. Buster Posey talked about that. Ken Rosenthal talked about him talking about that. They've got this homeless issue there. They've got crime there. Some of you guys are like, well, it's every major city. Um, yeah, but you need to go watch the videos on San Francisco or talk to somebody that's been there recently because they they certainly have an issue. Even some friends of mine that are there now have told me when they saw what I said, and they say it's worse than you even mentioned. So it's been tough for people, you know, the 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 baseball people to convince players to come to San Francisco. Although it's one of the best fan bases, nice to live in the Bay Area or close to it. Love that that part of the country to go there. Does that mean Bellinger will, for the right price couldn't you know bear it? I think he could. I mean, I think all of us could, right? But the Giants are being mentioned now. You know, Seattle, or they mentioned, yeah. But the bottom line is this, is that the, the real place that that works for him is the Cubs, coming back to the Cubs. It's all kind of falling into place. It makes it a little bit easier. Does that mean that his agent is, is going to say, hey, you know what, we lost another place to go. We're, we're going to, you know, take a deal. We're going to negotiate. Probably not, but if you're smart, you kind of start getting into this, the numbers game here, and you're like, you know, if if we got what we wanted, maybe, you know, maybe, right? I, I mean, it just feels like that. This was not what I was expecting. I didn't think that today we were going to have Toronto coming up with a deal to bring Kiermaier back, and then that, you know, could take, I think it takes Bellinger off the table, although some Blue Jays fans say, no, we can still figure it out. I don't think so. I just think that this, to me, looks like, hey, let's go and sign Chapman. Let's get him back. Maybe we can find some upgrades in other places. But, um, you know, Toronto dealing with this, uh, what it could come down to as well, which is my biggest criticism of, of dealing with Scott Boris is that Scott Boris's technique is, well, I'm going to wait, wait it out. But if you're a team, waiting it out, time is money. You know, and you get to the point where you're like, you know, F this. I'm, I'm, I got to get this guy signed so that I can figure out how I'm putting my roster together. And I may, might need to put my resources in other places, or I might need to figure out if I don't have that left-handed bat that Boris brings to the table, then I'm going to have to go somewhere else and spend that money elsewhere, right? Um, I may have to make a trade. I may need to figure out this or that, you know. So it's not just, well, we're gonna we're gonna just hold out as long as we can because you know we, we're gonna make you pay more money. It it starts to get to the point if you're the GM of the team, where you know, or the team president, where you're like, you know, I'd really love to have this guy, but I I just don't have the time to sit around and play games. And, and it does feel like that if you're in their position, you know, um, and you're talking about a lot of money. With that said, after watching Bellinger for a season, uh, I'm on the train, man. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Bellinger train. I think he's a great player. And I think that he, you bring him back, even if he had a little bit of a dip in production, as long as he doesn't fall into that crevice that we saw in in LA, you're gonna be all right. And I I I believe him. I think he was hurt. Watching the way that he was able to turn around the high heat, which is something that he didn't do a whole he didn't do well in those two years where he struggled with the Dodgers. We saw that last year. Makes in bad adjustments as well as anyone. You know, he does so many things well. So we're we're hoping that this makes it a little easier to have him sign with the Cubs. And how great would it be? to get this thing done before Cubs convention. So one step closer, maybe, for the Cubs to bring back Cody Bellinger. I don't know. I, I really feel like the momentum is, is heading in that direction. And if I'm him, looks good in that Cubs uniform. 
put that big C on you, the uh, City Connect uniforms. Oh, fantastic! And uh, and the Cubs they've got they've got a lot of players, but you could put him at first. You can put him in the outfield, and um, you know even if you had Mervis and a Pete Crow Armstrong or uh, a, a, a Canario or you know whoever else. You can still figure out a way with the DH to get all of these guys in and 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 have playing time, and um, you know and learn watching a, a a guy who's a former MVP. I w- I would just worry about the Cubs without him because he did bring so much production, you know, production, and obviously was was just such a big part of the offense. Without him, you know, it would be tough to uh, you know to figure out where you're going to get that production from. Did the video yesterday. It was really fun talking about some Cubs prospects, uh, I- including Pete Crow Armstrong and Owen Casey and um, and and the Jaguar, uh, Kevin Alcantara. But I-, I love talking Darius Hill. I know that, you know, I-, I got off the video and I thought, man, I know that why are people were saying, why, why? And I'm telling you, man, the guys that know how to move runners – and that understand that playing the game of baseball isn't always about a metric or a stat, but make your team better and help you win games are underrated. And I just wanted to add that to him and why I think he and players like him are important. You know, it's not always the the Chris Bryants and the Javi Baez's that 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 help you win. Sometimes it's the Ben Zobrists. You know, and and it's like, well, if you look back in, in, you know, in the history of baseball, is Ben Zobris going to pop up as the Babe Ruth or, you know, or someone, you know, or the Ernie Banks or the Billy Williams? No, but guys like him, guys like Darius Hill that just figure out a way to help you in a, in the game of baseball, win day in and day out are important. And and that's what kind of my point was. I didn't. I don't think I did a good enough job articulating that in uh, in yesterday's video. But anyway, we're going to talk more. I, you guys want to know about my thought on third baseman and catchers? We can talk about that. Maybe talk about first base. Um, you know, there are some up and comers there uh, that we could kind of get into as well. And then hopefully we'll have news like this where it's easy when you see. That Kiermaier's taking over in center field for Toronto. You're like, okay, well, you know, take the Blue Jays off the list. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, make sure you uh, comment. Love to hear from you in the comment section. Uh, also, now that you've got all this Christmas money, you need somewhere to spend it. I got the perfect place for you. The Smokies Baseball Team Store. They've got Cubs gear, right? That's their parent club. They have uh, autographed stuff, cards and jerseys, authentic stuff like Game use bats and balls. Find out for yourself. Plus, they won their first championship in 45 years. That's uh, Smokies Baseball and their team store at SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. Thanks for hanging out.